All right, we're going to continue talking about complex zeros and the fundamental theorem of algebra. Here we go. To determine how many real zeros and how many complex zeros a polynomial function has, if they give you three terms, try and factor it or use the quadratic formula if it's second degree. If they give you four terms, try the grouping. If not, you're going to have to use the PQ list and the graph. If they give you anything over a second degree, okay, then you're going to have to use your PQ list of the possible rational zeros. Type them into the graphing calculator. Use the list and the graph to choose which ones are real. Divide by them until you get it down to a second degree. Until you get, or you can get divide until you get it down to a linear or an irreducible quadratic. All right, so here we go. It says state how many complex and real zeros the function has. I know there are, the highest degree is two, so there are two complex zeros. Okay, how many of those are real or not depends on whether they have eyes in them or not. I mean, well, all complex, but like if let's say this thing crossed at five. Okay, x equals 5. So I could write that as a complex number. I could write 5 plus 0i. This would be real. Whereas if I end up with 2 minus 3i, that would be imaginary. This would be, they're both complex, but this one's real and this one's imaginary. Okay, so the highest degree tells you how many answers you have to have. If it's a fifth degree, you have five complex answers. If it's a seventh degree, you have seven complex answers. If you have, if it's a tenth degree, you're going to have ten of them. The degree tells you exactly how many complex zeros, but they're only real if they you cross the x-axis, all right, and um, yeah, if they cross the x-axis. So this is second degree. To figure out how many are real or not, I need to, like I said, if it's second degree, we can use our factoring tools and so so on and so forth. If I try and factor this one, though, however, 1 times 5 is 5. I need factors of 5 that can either add or subtract to, to 9. Well, the only factors of 5 are 1 and 5. I can add those and make 6, or I can subtract them and make 4. There's no way to get 9, so factoring isn't an option. So we're going to use the quadratic formula, which will give me x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Alright, so then I'm going to make x equals distribute 9 plus or minus the square root. I just type this all at once. I don't do the square root, okay, because we don't want, if it's complex, we're just going to simplify it down in terms of a radical and i. We're not going to use, we're not going to go decimal. So, I just use my calculator, parentheses, negative 9, parentheses, squared, minus 4, parentheses, 1, parentheses, parentheses, 5. Plus, then people don't screw up that sign. That's going to be 61 all over 2, okay? And then you could try and break 61 down, but 61's prime, so I can't break it down. But they're going to be real. There's no i in them, so there's going to be too complex, and in this case, both of them are going to be real. How do I know? Because there's no i. The other way I know is I graph the function. Sorry, I shouldn't have wrote all of it. I graph the function. Okay, so we have two complex, and both of them are real. If I look at the graphing calculator, I can see that it crosses the x-axis two times. That means it has two real zeros. And you can see, just, just to show you, Okay, if I type in my solutions, 9 plus the square root of 61, by the way, if you're going to type these in to get a decimal equivalent, you have to make sure you use parentheses around the numerator or it'll divide by 2 at the wrong time and you will get the wrong answer. So, but notice how I typed in 9 plus the square root of 61 divided by 2 and got 8 point, I got this 0. I typed in the, the minus square root of 61 and I got this 0. Okay. All right. I notice in this one there are four terms. It's a third degree, so my graph or my quadratic formula and factoring isn't going to work unless grouping works. Okay, grouping if it works, not guaranteed. But if there's four terms, you cut it in half, two by two. Then you're going to GCF, GCF, GCF again. Woo! So in the first two, 
what do they have in common? They have an x squared in common. If I factor out an x squared, I'm going to have x plus 9 left. These don't have anything in common, but you have to GCF. You don't have a choice. So if all else fails, you can always factor out a positive 1 or a negative 1, whatever this sign is. So if I divide by 1, divide by 1, I get x plus 9. Now at this point, if grouping is going to work, then you better have a matching binomial after you GCF, GCF. If you don't, then it's not factorable. And you're going to have to go to the graph and the PQ list. But this one worked. I have an x plus 9 on both sides. If I factor that out, cancel, cancel, I'm left in the other hole is x squared plus 1. Now, once we factored, we can set them to 0 and solve. So x plus 9 equals 0, and x squared plus 1 equals 0, minus 9, minus 9, x equals negative 9. So this thing is going to, that's real. It's going to cross the x-axis at negative 9. Minus 1, minus 1, x squared equals negative 1, square root, square root, uh-oh, x equals plus or minus i, square roots of 1, because the negative comes out as an i, and the square root of i, I mean the square root of 1 is just 1, so it's plus or minus i. There has to be, again, there has to be three complex zeros. But if you look, one of them is going to be real, and this one, you've got x equals positive i, that one's imaginary, and x equals negative i. So you have two of them that are going to be imaginary. These two numbers have to add up to the degree. Okay? And if you look at my graph, you can see that it crosses at 9, or at negative 9, but it doesn't touch again. It turns around way up there. It doesn't come back down and touch. And again, your third degree means there are three complex zeros. But for as far as x-intercepts go, as far as x-intercepts go, there could be three or, in this case, one, because it's always less than that by two. And in, so in this graph, it actually only crossed once. All right, so if we try this one, none of my factoring techniques, quadratic formula, those are not going to work. This is a fifth degree function, way more than four terms. So we're going to use our PQ list in our graph. I don't even really do my PQ list. I should, but I cheat. So I'm looking at the graph, and remember, I'm expecting, I know there has to be five complex zeros. Okay, there's got to be five total. Well, I'm looking at the graph, and it kind of looks like it comes up like this, and then it does a little dip right here. That was my standard window. So just out of curiosity, I'm thinking, man, this thing could cross... 5 times, or 5 take away 2 is 3 times, or 3 take away 2 is 1 time. It could cross 5 times, or 3 times, or 1 time. And I can see it crosses once, but I'm not sure. I mean, does it come back up over here? Does it come back down over here? Not really sure. So I'm going to expand my window a little bit just to play around. So you can see what I changed it to. I kept the x's negative 10 to 10, and I went from negative 500 to 3,000 on the y's. And so I could see the top of that. And remember, fifth degree also means my tails have to go opposite. So I'm sorry, guys. The only way this would cross, and now it looks like it's, it's crossing twice. One with a multiplicity of an odd, and this one an even multiplicity. And I'm like, but this one, no way. But it's because look how bad I stretched my window. Okay, so just again, to get a, I, I backed it back off and just went from negative 10 to 50 on the Y. And you can tell, it doesn't come down and touch it. So you've got to be careful of that hidden behavior we spent so much time talking about. Okay, be careful when you pick those windows. But anyway, I can see from the graph that it does cross at right there, which is, I don't know where that is. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, looks like negative 8 to me. Yes? Right? So, oh, it didn't, oh, you know what, silly? This one didn't even actually tell me I had to find them. It just said state how many complex and how many real. Well, there's going to be five complex, but I can tell from the graph only one of them is real, so the other four are going to have to be imaginary. Okay? Yeah, if I was going to actually have to 
find all five complex, I, I wouldn't have enough information to do it. Normally, you would take one that you have and just start dividing by it till you get it down to a second or a first degree. Um, but again, if you read the instructions, it, it actually didn't, it just said state how many complex and reals. It didn't state find them. I was finding them on all the last ones, but I don't have enough information to do this. All right, so you try this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. All right, um, I could try grouping, but I could pull out an x squared, which would leave x minus 10. And over here, they have nothing in common. I, so there's no way I'm going to get a matching binomial. So grouping technique isn't going to work. So I'm going to go to my PQ list and my graph. So I went to my graph, and I can see that it crosses one, two, three times. Again, I, it, since it didn't ask me to find them, I'm not going to do all the math. It just says state how many complex. Well, that one's easy. It's always the highest degree. So I know there's going to be three complex. They're only real if they actually cross the x-axis. Well, I see it cross three times, so all three of them are real. Okay. Go do this one. Hit pause when you're ready. And I hope you got <coughs> two of them are real. <coughs> Again, <coughs> I could actually <coughs> factor this and find them. Again, I'm just doing this to show you some techniques because in a minute, you not only have to state how many, but you're going to actually have to find them. So it's just going to show you some different techniques. This isn't quadratic, okay, because it doesn't go second degree, first degree. But it's kind of a quadratic because this degree is half of the first degree, okay? Two is half of four. And when that happens, you can still factor or do quadratic formula. It's just you're not going to be solving for x. You're going to be solving for x squared. So if I would factor this, it should be an easy factor because a is 1. Instead of putting x in both ones, I'm going to put x squared because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. I, whatever you have in the first has to equal the first term. Factors of 4 that would make 3 are 1 and 4. c is negative, so only bully gets the middle, so this one doesn't. Now set it to 0 and solve. Well, if I take x squared plus 1 equals 0 and x squared minus 4 equals 0, to solve the first one, minus 1, minus 1, I'm going to have x squared equals negative 1, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 1. Those are both real. There's no i. Oh, no, 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 no. The negative comes out as i. So since they have i's, those are two imaginary positive y and negative y. Okay, if I solve this one, add 4, add 4, I have x squared equals 4, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 2. No i, so two of them are real, and all four of them are complex. Okay, I could write 2, positive 2 plus 0i, negative 2 plus 0y, those are, those are still complex, but those are my two real ones. And then my two complex ones are positive i and negative i. Yeah? Again, actually, that as um, um, written in complex form would be 0 plus 1i and 0 minus 1i. All right. And you can see in the picture it only crosses twice. So only two of them are real. All right, so how do you decide how many complex and real zeros a function has? Well, again, yeah, see, I think I answered these on the last one, and we weren't even really there yet. Complex is equal to n. Whatever the, the degree of the polynomial is, that's how many complex zeros there are. Real means that it actually crosses the x-axis. Okay? All right, so it says now we're not just stating how many are, are real and how many are possible. I mean, there's five, five um, complex zeros, but my picture shows me that only three of them are going to be real and two of them are going to be imaginary. So to find them all and to write it in its linear factorization, please pay attention. That means all the factors have to be first degree. You can't stop at second degree. 
<coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, I can tell from the graph that it crosses at negative 2, at positive 1, and 1, 2, 3, at positive 4. Notice that this is degree 5. If I divide by negative 2, that's going to drop it down to a fourth degree. Then when I divide by 1, that's going to drop it down to a third degree. And then when I divide by 4, that's going to drop it down to a second degree. And then I can either factor or do a quadratic formula to find the remaining of them. Okay? So I'm going to put negative 2 in first. doesn't matter what order you go in. Fifth degree coefficient, fourth degree, third degree, second degree, uh, first degree, constant. Draw the line. One comes out times negative two is negative two. Negative three eats negative two, comes out negative five, times negative two brings back positive ten. Negative five plus ten is positive five, times negative two is negative ten. 5 minus 10 is negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. Negative 6 positive 10 is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 and remainder 0. Which it better have or my graph is lying to me. So that dropped it down to a fourth degree. Third degree, second degree, first degree constant. Now I'm going to take my next 0, put 1 in the hole. My coefficients, 1, negative 5, positive 5, negative 5, positive 4. And I'm going to reduce this down to a third degree by dividing again. So 1 comes out, times 1 is 1, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, times 1 is negative 4, 5 minus 4 is positive 1, times positive 1. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, times 1 is negative 4, 4 minus 4 is remainder 0. Again, better be or my graph is lying to me. That dropped us down to a third degree. Third degree, second degree, first degree. So now I'm going to use my third one, 4, and I'm going to put that in the store. And I'm going to use my third degree coefficients, which are 1, negative 4, positive 1, negative 4. Draw the line, 1 comes out, times 4 is 4, comes out 0, 0 times 4 is 0, comes out 1, times 4 is 4, and I get a remainder of 0. And this drops me down to a second degree, so 1x squared plus 0x plus 1. You don't have to write that. So what's left now is x squared plus 1. Once you've gotten it down to a second degree, then set it to zero and solve it yourself. If it's this form where there's no first degree x, I just have to isolate and root. So I'm going to minus 1, minus 1. x squared equals negative 1. Square root, square root, and x equals plus or minus i. So now I have x equals negative 2, x equals 1, x equals 4, and x equals i, and x equals negative i. Do I have five answers? And I do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, we were supposed to write f of x in its linear factorization. So what they want is they want me to rewrite f of x as, instead of zeros, as a bunch of factors. Well, again, that would be x plus 2, plus 2, I shouldn't write that, plus 2, plus 2, x plus 2 equals 0, minus 1, minus 1, so that one's going to be x minus 1, minus 4, minus 4, that's x minus 4, minus i, minus i, that's x minus i, plus i, plus i, that's x plus i. And that would be my linear factorization. They're going to change directions on you in a minute. They're going to say write it as a product of linear and irreducible quadratic. So all you do is just back up one step. Back here, okay, when I got i, back up to when it was equal to 0. As a product of linear and irreducible quadratics, my function would be x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 4 times x squared plus 1. In other words, you wouldn't do this. 
That's what it means by irreducible quadratic. If I reduce that quadratic down to its linear terms, there's going to be i's in them. Just pay attention. Pay attention to the directions because Math Excel will mark you wrong if you either go too far or don't. Okay? All right, so again, they want linear factorization. Well, I notice here that I mean, I could use, it's a fourth degree, I could use the, the graph, but I just happened to notice that I could factor out an x squared, which would leave x squared plus 16. Well, again, now I, I could write this, that's its irreducible quadratic factors, okay? If it said write this as its irreducible quadratic factors, that would be it, okay? But they want linear, so I need to keep going. So set them to zero and solve. This one, if I square root, square root, I get x equals technically plus or minus zero. All right. But it's just going to be zero because zero isn't positive or negative. Minus 16, minus 16, I get x squared equals negative 16. Square root, square root. I get x equals plus or minus i, and the square root of 16 is 4, so plus or minus 4i. So I have, I've got to get four answers. I have x equals 0, x equals 0, or x equals 0, multiplicity 2. And again, that's because of the plus or minus. That technically has a multiplicity of 2. And then I have x equals 4i, and x equals negative 4i. Well, to turn it into, to write the function as its linear factors, minus 0, minus 0, you get x minus 0, right? Minus 0, minus 0, you get x minus 0. Minus 4i, minus 4i, you get x minus 4i. Add 4i, add 4i, you get x plus 4i. So your function, written as its linear factions, linear factors, is x, times x, times x minus 4i, times x plus 4i. There's its linear factorization. No x has a degree higher than 1. And if you look, see how it just touches at 0? It's got a multiplicity of 2. It's just tangent. And the other two are imaginary. All right, so you try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And I hope you got two. If you did not, let's look at why. It's a third degree, I could, but it's got four terms. I could try to do grouping. Oh, I think it's going to work. I could GCF by x squared, which would leave x plus 4. And on this side, I could GCF by positive 4, which would leave x plus 4. So then I could GCF again by the matching binomial. And the other one would be x squared plus 4. Okay. Now I've got it down to a linear and a quadratic. Okay. So to that one I can keep. I mean, but if you want, once you get them linear or second, you can set them to 0 and solve. So minus 4, minus 4, I get x equals negative 4. Minus 4, minus 4, x squared equals negative 4. Square root, square root, x equals plus or minus... Y. So I now have three solutions. I do. I have x equals negative 4, x equals positive 2i, and x equals negative 2i. So to write those back as factors, add 4, add 4, minus 2i, minus 2i, plus 2i, plus 2i. You get x plus 4, you get x minus 2i, you get x plus 2i. So my function in linear factored form would be x plus 4 times x minus 2i times x plus 2i. And there you go. And if I look, the only place that it crosses is at negative 4. I didn't adjust the window so that I could see higher or lower, but um, there we go. All right, so how can you use the graph of a function, synthetic division, and the quadratic formula to find the real and complex zeros of a function? Well, we can find real zeros 
real rational zeros using the graph and the PQ list, but the graph. Divide by them, depress the polynomial to first or second degree, then use algebra to find the zero, complex or not. All right, to find all the zeros and write a linear factorization of, a factorization of a polynomial function, use the given zero to divide by and depress the function into, into a factorable function. If the given zero is complex, remember its conjugate is automatically another zero. Multiply those together first. You can't divide by i's. You just have to rationalize, which makes the problem a thousand times longer than it needs to be. So multiply them first and then divide the polynomial by it. Um, factor the depressed polynomial to find the remaining and then write the function as a product of all of its factors. So here we go. It says the complex number z equals 1 minus 2i is a zero of this fourth degree function. Find the remaining zeros. I have to find four. I have to have four answers when I'm done. And I'm looking at the graph and it doesn't even cross once, which means all four of these are going to be imaginary. They're all going to be complex. Okay, but they gave me one of them. They told me that one, they're using Z, but I'm going to use X. They gave me one zero, oh, that's why they use Z for zero, is one minus 2i. So don't I know automatically a second one is one plus 2i. Remember the complex conjugate theorem? Now, normally what we would do is we would take the zeros we know, we would divide by it. If I divide by this one, it'll drop it to a third degree. Then divide by this one, it'll drop it to a second degree. And once it's at a second degree, I can use factoring or quadratic formula to find my other two. The problem is you can't divide by i. You'd have to, you'd put this over this and then rationalize and, oh, it's a, it would be a nightmare. All right. So we're going to multiply these together first. And it's the same thing as doing this. What's 12 divided by 2? 6. What's 12 divided by 4? 3. Well, what's 12 divided by... Well, I'm doing two different things. What's 12 divided by... Never mind. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Well, I was thinking of something, but it wasn't panning out. I can divide 12 by 2, and that would go 6 times. I can buy, divide 12 by 3, and that would go 4 times. But I could also divide 12 by this product. Two since 2 goes in there and 3 goes in there, then their product has to go in there. I could also, that's what I was trying to say, I could also divide 12 by their product and get something also. In other words, if 2 is a factor and 3 is a factor, then their product has to be a factor. And that's what I'm doing here. This is a factor, this is a factor, so their product has to be a factor, which allows me to multiply first, and we know what happens when we multiply conjugates, the i's are going to be eliminated, and then we can divide much easier. So I'm going to take, but now you're not going to multiply 1 minus 2i times 1 plus 2i. Those are zeros. You're not going to multiply the zeros together. You've got to multiply the factors together. So if I've got x equals 1 minus 2i and 1 plus 2i, to turn them back into factors, I've got to get 0 back on one side. So minus 1 and add 2i, which makes this factor x minus 1 plus 2i. This one, I'm going to minus 1, minus 1, and minus 2i, minus 2i gives me x minus 1, minus 2i. Now, if I multiply those two together, I get x times x is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x, x times negative 2i is negative 2xi, Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times negative 2i is positive 2i. What else? 
what color should we do next? To positive 2i times x is positive 2xi. Positive 2i times negative 1 is negative 2i. Positive 2i times negative 2i is negative 4i squared. Okay, combine like terms. I have, oh, or let's get rid of our i's. Negative 2xi, positive 2xi, negative 2i, positive 2i, i squared turns into negative 1, which makes a positive 4. So I have x squared minus x minus x is minus 2x, plus 1 plus 4 is plus 5. So now if I do, it, now if I divide this fourth degree function, by the product of the two, that's going to drop it to a second degree, and then I can use quadratic formula. So we're going to divide that now into my function. Which is up here. And that now is what we're going to divide into. Okay, so I'm going to divide into... Mm -hmm. 4x to the 4th plus 17x squared plus 14x plus 65. Go to the alley. So I have 4x to the 4th divided by x squared is 4x squared. Goes up. 4x squared times x squared is 4x to the 4th. 4x squared times negative 2x is negative 8x cubed. 4x squared times positive 5 is positive 20x squared. And I got a little mess going on because this doesn't line up right. But don't forget, you draw the line, you change all signs. The fourth degrees cancel. This is a third degree. It doesn't have a third degree to line up with. Drop it down. There's my two second degrees. 17x squared minus 20x squared is negative 3x squared. Everything else drops down, the positive 14x and the plus 65. And we're going to go back to the alley again. So I have 8x cubed divided by x squared equals 8x. Goes up. 8x times x squared is 8x cubed. 8x times negative 2x is negative 16x squared. 8x times positive 5 is positive 40x. So when I draw the line, I change all signs. The cubes cancel. Negative 3x squared plus 16x squared is 13x squared. 14x minus 40x is negative 26x plus 65 comes down from inside. And we're back at the alley again. So I have 13x squared divided by x squared is 13. 13 goes up. And remember, I have to get a, a remainder of 0 or I did something wrong. Because the, the product of those two has to also be a factor. 13 times x squared is 13x squared. 13 times negative 2x is negative 26x. And 13 times 5 is positive 65. When I draw the line, I change all signs. They cancel. And I do get a remainder of 0, which I, again, better have or my algebra is lying to me. So now I can take my quotient... And I can either, I can do quadratic formula on it to figure out what my other two, and I know they're going to be imaginary, so I know I can't factor. I know I'm going to have to use quadratic formula because I can, the graph tells me it's not going to touch it. So I'm going to do quadratic formula with this quadratic function now. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over... 2 times a, and that is going to give me, give me a handy dandy second here, that is going to give me a negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 144 all over 8, okay, the negative is going to come out as an i, and the square root of 144 is 12, 
and then they would write it x equals negative 8 plus or minus 12i all over 8. And then if I reduce that, uh, 4 goes into everything. 4 into 8 goes twice. 4 into 12 goes 3. 4 into 8 goes twice. So I have x equals negative 2 plus or minus 3i all over 2. Okay, so now I've got x equals 1 minus 2i. I'm out of room here. I have, and, and there's the factors of it, yes? I also have x equals, oops, see my shirt touches it and it's so sensitive. I also have x equals negative 2 plus 3i over 2, and I have x equals negative 2 minus 3i over 2. Now, those are all my zeros. They want me to write its linear factorization, all right? So I need those all back as factors. And I'm trying to find one. Maybe I'll do my highlighter thing here. Okay, this zero made that factor. This zero made that factor. So let's we'll just get those other two. And to get the other two, I'm going to do something funny. I'm going to kill this fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And if I do that, I have 2x equals negative 2 plus 3i because that 2 would cancel that 2. Whoa. Hold on. Ugh. There we go. All right. So then, to get everything on the same side, I would add 2, add 2, add minus 3i. Oh, for crying out loud. I don't know why this thing like shuts the pen off and then starts going to advancing the slides. I'm going to add 2, and I'm going to subtract 3i, which makes 2x plus 2 minus 3i. Ugh. Okay, so there's another one I got. Now I'm going to do the same to the other one. I'm going to multiply by 2, multiply by 2. That gives me 2x equals negative 2 minus 3i because those cancel. Guys, I wish I knew what was happening here, but... <sighs> All right, so then I'm going to... Add 2, add 2, add 3i, add 3i, and I get 2x plus 2 plus 3i equals 0. And there's my fourth one. And I know I had to have four factors because I have a fourth degree. So now finally I can write my function, but I'm going to have to clear some room. Alright, so my final function will be f of x equals x minus 1 plus 2i times x minus 1 minus 2i times 2x plus 2 minus 3i times 2x plus 2 plus 3i. Okay? That would be its linear factorization. Its quadratic factorization would be this times this, yeah? Alright, so this one says using the given zero, find all the other zeros of f of x. I know that there has to be four. Again, if I cheat a little bit and I look, I know that two of them are going to be real, right? And two of them won't. Now, this one, 
Again, I could just use the graph and go, oh, it crosses at, what, 1, 2, 3, 5, and negative 5. But again, this was one of those where do you see that 2 is half of 4, so quadratic would work. And let's see, if I did quadratic formula on this, because there's no factors of 100, that would make 21. No, because then all 4 would be real. So if I did quadratic formula, the only difference is, is I would have to be finding x squared instead of x. But I don't know, maybe we want to stick with the, if you look at the graph, you can see that it crosses at positive 5 and negative 5. But this one tells me that negative 2i is also a 0, which means x equals negative 2i and x equals positive 2i. And again, we're cheating here by looking at the graph. They want us to use the zeros to find all the other zeros. So you can divide by those i's. But if I change them back into factors and multiply them together, I can divide by the product of the factors. So add 2i, add 2i, I get x plus 2i. Minus 2i, minus 2i, I get x minus 2i. And if I multiply those together and divide by it, I can find the other ones. So I have x times x is x squared minus 2xi plus 2xi minus 2i squared. These cancel. That turns into a real negative 1, which gives me x squared plus 2. So now if I divide by that, if I take that into x to the 4th minus 21x squared minus 100, and I start dividing, x to the 4th divided by x squared is x squared times x squared is x to the 4th times 2 is positive 2x squared. But when I draw the line, I change the signs, which cancels the 4th degree and gives me negative 23x squared minus 100. Back to the alley, negative 23x squared divided by x squared is negative 23. Right? What did I do? Oh, the goober, that's going to be 4i squared. So that's going to be minus 4 times negative 1, which is going to be x squared plus 4. Let's try that again, shall we? Sorry, so x squared goes up. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 4 is positive 4x squared. Okay, draw the line, change the signs, cancels. This is negative 25x squared. Bring down the minus 100. And we go back to the alley. Negative 25x squared divided by x squared equals negative 25. Goes up. Negative 25 times x squared is negative 25x squared times positive 4 is negative 100. When I draw the line, I change both signs. The squares cancel, the constants cancel, and the remainder is 0, which it better be, or that wasn't really, um, I did something wrong. Okay, so if it said write, and again, I'm just getting ahead of myself. If it said write the irreducible quadratic factorization, your function, f of x, would be equal to x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 25. This one's reducible, though. This one's not reducible because if you solve it, you get imaginary numbers. This one can be factored more. So it's going to factor into x squared plus 4 times bino, bino, plus n, bino, 5 and 5. There is my, my linear and irreducible quadratic factorization. But they didn't say that they, oh, maybe I should read the directions. They just want us to find all the zeros. Sorry, guys, I'm way ahead of myself wanting to do linear factorization and all that stuff. I'm doing too much work. We just want to find the zeros. So, to finish turning this into zeros, you set them to zero and solve, right? So we know these two, and that's from this. If we set these other two to zeros, x plus 5 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, 
minus 5 minus 5, x equals negative 5, add 5, add 5, x equals 5. And there are my four zeros. Okay? I apologize again. I should read my own directions. Pay attention to what they ask you for. I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just not doing what they're asking me for. If they asked for linear and irreducible quadratic, this would be my answer. But they just asked for zeros, so you set them all to zero and you solve them. Yes? All right. Go, hit pause, come back when you're ready. Hopefully you got four. If not, let's look at one. All right, this says x equals five minus five i, which then tells me that x also equals five plus five i. We can't divide by i, so I'm gonna turn them into factors, minus five, plus 5i plus 5i, that gives me x minus 5 plus 5i. Then my other one, minus 5 minus 5 minus 5i minus 5i, I got x minus 5 minus 5i. Now if I multiply those together, x times x is x squared, x times negative 5 is negative 5x, x times negative 5i is negative 5xi. Negative 5 times x, hold on, do a color please. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Negative 5 times negative 5i is positive 25i. And positive 5i times x is positive 5xi. Positive 5i times negative 5 is negative 25i. And positive 5i times negative 5i is negative 25 i squared sorry for the let's see if i can make that go away there it goes minus 25 i squared all right then we're going to combine like to get rid of the i's there's a negative 5x i and a positive 5x i a negative 25 i and a positive 25 i and that's going to turn into a negative one so i have x squared minus 5x minus 5x is minus 10x. This is going to be negative 25 times negative 1 is positive 25, and a positive 25 is a positive 50. Yes. So now if I take this and divide it by that product, all right, so I'm going to have x to the fourth minus 10x cubed plus 51x squared minus 10x plus 50 divided by x squared minus 10x plus 50. So in the alley, we've got x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared goes up times x squared is x to the fourth times negative 10x is negative 10x cubed times 50 is positive 50x squared but I'm going to draw the line and change all signs which kills the fourth degree oh Merry Christmas and the third degree 51 x squared take away 50 x squared leaves 1 x squared minus 10 x plus 50 divide again x squared divided by x squared is positive 1 So positive 1 goes up times x squared is x squared times negative 10x is negative 10x times positive 50 is positive 50. Draw the line and change all signs and everything cancels, remainder 0, which again it should, or we did something wrong. I know it has to be a factor. So now set this to 0 because it's down to a second degree, solve it, and we'll get the other zero. So minus one, minus one. X squared equals negative one. Square root, square root, X equals plus or minus I. So I have X equals five minus five I, X equals five plus five I, X equals positive I, and X equals negative I. There's all four of my solutions. Now, how come they're only saying this one? Where's their five? Because that one they already gave you. 
They're just saying you list the ones that they didn't already give you. So they gave you one, you had to find the other three. All right, and if you look at the graph, it doesn't touch at all. All right, so this one says, write the function as a product of its linear and irreducible quadratic factors. So that's saying once you get it down to a second degree and you can't factor it, in other words, you'd have to use quadratic formula, which means it's imaginary, to stop, okay? All right, I could try and factor by grouping, but it's not going to work, so I'm going to use my graph, and I can see that it crosses at 2. So I know I can divide by 2, my third degree coefficient, second degree, first degree constant. All right, then we draw the line, 1 comes out, times 2 is 2, comes out positive 1, brings back 2, comes out 1, brings back 2, comes out 0. So that dropped me down now from a third degree to a second degree, plus 1x plus 1. Yeah? All right, now if I tried to factor this, there are no factors of 1 that make 1. So it can't be factored, which means I'd have to do quadratic formula, which means I'm going to get I'm going to get irrational roots. So my function in factored form, it has one linear factor that says that x equals 2, right? That one's going to be x minus 2. And then this factor, since I can't factor it, is my irreducible second degree. And I can tell it's going to be these two. The two solutions I would get from here if I kept going are imaginary because this one is the only real one. All right, so same for this one. Fourth degree, I got to use my graph. And I can see that it crosses at positive 1 and negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So if I divide by negative 4, it'll drop it to a third degree. If I divide the third degree by 1, it'll drop it to a second degree. And then I can use algebra techniques to get the other zeros. So I'm going to divide by negative 4 first. My fourth degree coefficient, third degree, second degree, first degree constant. All right, one, oops, sorry. trying to change colors there. 1 comes out times negative 4 is negative 4, comes out negative 1, comes back positive 4, comes out positive 1, brings back negative 4, comes out negative 1, brings back positive 4, gives me a remainder of 0, which I knew it had to or something's wrong. And now I'm down to a third degree function. And I'm going to divide by my other 0, which I can't see anymore was positive 1, so I'm going to put positive 1 in the hole and use my third degree coefficients. 1 comes out, brings back 1, comes out 0, brings back 0, comes out 1, brings back 1, remainder of 0. And this has dropped me down to a second degree function. And you don't have to write the 0x, so my quadratic is x squared pot plus 1. If I kept going and solved this, Set it to 0, minus 1, minus 1, x squared equals negative 1, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus i. I get imaginary roots. So they're saying that this factor is an irreducible factor, because if you keep going, you get i's. So I have two linears. I have x equals negative 4. I have x equals 1, right, which as factors is x plus 4 minus 1 minus 1 is x minus 1, and then my irreducible quadratic. So my function is these two linear factors and one irreducible quadratic factor. All right, you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and I hope you got 1. If not, let's look at y. There's my graph, so I can see that it crosses at 1, 2, 3, at 4, and at 5, 6, at 7, looks like. So if I divide by 4, 4th degree, 3rd degree, 2nd degree, 1st degree, constant, 1 comes out, times 4, negative 7, that's negative 28, 
positive 1, positive 4, negative 7, negative 28, 0. And that drops me from a fourth degree to a third degree. And then I can divide my third degree by my other 0. So I'm going to put 7 in the hole. 1 comes out, brings back 7. 0 comes out, brings back 0. 1 comes out, brings back 7. 0 is my remainder. And that dropped me down to my second degree, x squared plus 0x plus 1, which we don't have to write the 0x. So my second degree factor, my quadratic factor is x squared plus 1. I can try and solve it, but I'm going to minus 1 minus 1 and get x squared equals negative 1, square root. And I'm going to get two imaginary um, solutions, which means go back to the factor and stop. So I have x equals 4, which is x minus 4 as a factor. I have x equals 7, which is x minus 7 as a factor. And then I have my irreducible quadratic factor. So my function in factored form is x minus 4 times x minus 7 times x squared plus 1. All right. So, how can you use the graph of a function, synthetic division, and the quadratic formula to find the real and complex zeros? We just said that on the last slide. And we are at homework, so you are done. Happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.